Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me Sula. In this episode I'm going to go over some advice on how to best see or improve your chances of seeing faint deep sky objects with your telescope. You might think it's solely a function of having a large aperture telescope, but it's not. In fact, some large deep sky objects that are very faint are best seen in small instruments like a small refractor, 80 or 90 millimeters. Things like the California Nebula, IC 1396, NGC 7000, these large faint objects require a telescope that affords a wide field of view. It's hard to achieve with the large aperture telescope, especially schmidt cassegrain telescopes with their long focal length and some objects are even best suited to binoculars. So many deep sky objects are within reach of smaller aperture telescopes and binoculars. But for some faint deep sky objects, there's no getting around the fact that large aperture telescopes with their superior light gathering capability will give you a better chance to see some of the hardest and faintest objects like the Horsehead Nebula, the Cone at the top of the Cone Nebula, the Footprint Nebula, the Central Star in the Ring Nebula, and some other extremely difficult objects. But other than running out and buying a gigantic large aperture telescope, what else can you do to improve your chance to see faint objects? Well, the most obvious is to go to the darkest place that you can get to with your telescope. And let me clarify what I mean by a dark place. I'm not talking about the suburbs. I'm talking about really dark. I'm talking about Bortle 1 or Bortle 2, Bortle 3 at the worst. If you don't know how to find a dark sky site, you can look at maps like lightpollutionmap.info or the International Dark Sky Association's list of dark sky places. And just look for the darkest areas on those maps that are accessible to people, or just go to the most remote place that you can think of that has an absence of humans, but is accessible and doesn't have any artificial lighting. But be aware that even some dark sky places might have some bothersome localized lights such as 24-hour bathroom lighting in a campground or someone in an RV with Christmas lights strung up on the outside or a group of campers nearby, each with their own LED flashlight or an annoying street light even that can really infringe on what you'll be able to see with your telescope. You also ideally want to go somewhere with a little elevation because the higher you are, up to about maybe 6,500 feet, the less atmosphere you're looking through. And of course, you need to be somewhere where the sky is not obstructed. You have a clear view, it's not blocked by trees or other obstacles. And you want somewhere not too humid because humidity, smoke, the Earth's atmosphere, these are all things that will diminish what you can see in your telescope, no matter the aperture. If you can find a truly dark sky site, you can make up for a lack of aperture to some extent. Next, you need to prepare in advance. Make a list of the objects that you want to see that evening. And for each object, look up the apparent size and also look at some sketches of it or photos if you can't find a sketch to get an idea of what to look for. Just be aware that if all you can find are photos that you won't be seeing much of any color. But a photo should at least give you an idea of the shape or what to look for. Study star charts in advance and familiarize yourself with 
the star patterns and stars around the object. This will help with locating it in the night sky, especially if you're not going to be using a go-to telescope. Collimate your telescope during the day, if necessary, and clean your eyepieces that you're going to be using. During the day of the day that you intend to observe, avoid bright lights. Try not to stare at your computer all day or your phone and avoid spending a long time in bright sunlight. In fact, you might even consider wearing a patch over your observing eye during the day or red goggles. When you get to your observing site, only use a red headlamp or a red flashlight and a dim one at that. Let your telescope cool down adequately before beginning your session and give yourself at least 30 minutes to allow your eyes to become accustomed to the darkness. It only takes about 10 or 15 minutes for your pupil to dilate and adjust to the darkness, but if you can wait longer, 15 minutes or even longer, without looking at anything bright, don't look at Venus, don't look at Jupiter, don't even look at Sirius, then a chemical reaction will begin to take place in your eye, allowing you to see even more. Choose a night with no moon and check your weather app to make sure that there won't be any clouds. Once you're ready to begin observing, take time with each object. Don't be in a hurry to check the object off your list. Study each object. If you're having trouble seeing the object, here are some techniques that you can use to try to see it. Use averted vision. Looking at something with your peripheral vision places the object in the most sensitive part of your eye's retina. If you still can't see it, try sweeping across the field with the telescope slowly or just jiggle the telescope. Try viewing with both eyes open. Also, try putting a blanket over your head to block out all ambient light. Experiment with higher power eyepieces. If you're trying to see an emission nebula, Use a nebula filter, such as a UHC filter or an O3 filter for planetary nebulae, or even an H-beta filter. And you can see my video about nebula filters for advice on which filters to use. And take a chair to sit in while you observe to make yourself more comfortable. And dress warmly, because you don't want to get cold or be uncomfortable during your observing session. And also take a table so you can write in your logbook and definitely consider sketching what you see at the eyepiece. And if you just can't see something after giving it an adequate amount of time, don't worry and don't stress about it. The stars are not going anywhere. Remember that visual astronomy is supposed to be fun, so have fun. Just note in your logbook that you didn't see the object and note how long you spent trying to see it and note your determination to try again on another night. Finding and seeing faint deep sky objects is not easy. In fact, it's very challenging, but it sure is rewarding to see something that's so incredibly far away whose light left the object thousands or maybe even millions of years ago. Well, I hope you found my tips for seeing faint deep sky objects helpful. I'll see y'all in the next one. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.